Welcome people, welcome to Luke's next update. As you can see, I'm in my fully professional YouTube studio because that's just the kind of guy I am. And if you don't like it, you can see the little exit sign in the background there on the wall. That's where the exit is. So you're welcome to use it. Now, in this episode, we're gonna talk a bit about camera stuff, like what it is and all the parts of it and stuff like that. I made one of this uh, a couple of years ago but, uh, you know, I was young and I was a bit dumber then. So I'm going to do another one just to kind of update things. All right. Also, I didn't like the shirt I was wearing in that one. So cool. So anyway, so this is a camera. Now, you've heard the word DSLR. DSLR. What the hell does that mean? Okay, good. So it's annoying to explain it because you need to know about the history of cameras and da 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 da. The D stands for digital. All right, that's the most important point. Then SLR. All right, here's some words for you. SLR stands for single one lens, the lens on a camera, reflex, reflex. Okay, good. Now what's that, what that's talking about is the fact that on these cameras, you look through this little hole here and what it's actually got is your, your eyesight goes through the hole and there's a little mirror in the middle here somewhere. And then what it does is you look through there, it's like a periscope. You look through there and then there's a mirror and it reflects your vision down. And there's another mirror that then reflects your vision out, out through the lens. So a single lens reflex just means you're looking through a mirror system, which is then showing you exactly what the lens is seeing. Because obviously you can see that this is higher than the lens. So if there was no mirror there, you would just see a black piece of plastic inside the camera. So DS, DSLR means just a digital version of this mirror system. That's all it is. And look, look, if you take off the lens, that thing right there is a mirror. So that mirror is looking up and then it's reflecting and it's coming out here. So then I can see uh, through the thingamajig. Okay, good, good. Clarity equals understanding equals you get it. Now, all right, let's just go through some real quick things. I'll explain this in more details later when I make like a full course, but right now it's just like breakfast time for um, Luke. Here's my coffee. Hello. Okay, good. So now there's three, like you get a camera, there's all these buttons, there's all these screens. It looks extremely complicated. You can learn about all these little individual things as you go, but there's just three things you really need to know about how to operate a camera. And it's the same with every, any camera. And the only difference, right, with, um, say, a camera on a phone, a camera on a phone does the exact same things as this does, except they super simplify it. They make it all automatic, so you don't even think about it. All you're doing is pressing the button on your phone and it's taking the photo for you and all this. But the cool thing about having a real camera is that you have full control over all the different things. So that's like how you can get a blurry background, you know? Sometimes a phone won't let you choose. Do you want the background blurred or whatever? Oh, the new iPhones and stuff have this special portrait mode. I know I've seen that and that looks lovely. Still, it's not as good as the real thing. So anyway, the three basic parts to camera controls are, um, okay, good. First of all, you have shutter speed. Okay, what's the shutter? Shutter is something that shuts. Okay, so a shutter on a camera is literally when you when you press the button, that little thing you just saw, that's the shutter coming down, it's shutting. It's snapping. It's snapping a piece of time in that moment. It shuts it, shuts it off, okay? And then in a camera, you can choose how fast that happens. It can be really fast, or you can slow it down. This is eight seconds. Wait for it. That was slow as, you know? But for that, because you have control over that, you can do things like create blur. You want motion blur. You want to see those like car lights at nighttime in the city streets. You know how they get those, woo, those circus looking red lights and lines. You use a slow shutter speed for that. Then if you're photographing something that's moving super fast and you need to capture it, like a person running or a droplet of water, you need a super fast shutter speed. I'm sorry, I'm getting messages. My phone needs to go on airplane mode right the hell now. People, communication is a bad thing. Okay, good. Good. 
I'm just kidding. Communication is what we all need to do more of. Okay, good. So that's shutter. That's the first thing you need to know. One of three. Here's the other two. The second thing is aperture. Aperture. The word aperture means hole. It just means a hole. Okay. Now, aperture is to do with your lens. Okay. As you can see here, the lens is a hole. Okay. A lens is made up of just several slivers of glass. Some of them are like magnifying glasses. And then you put one magnifying glass in front of another magnifying glass and the light gets adjusted. And then you end up seeing a picture in your camera that's more zoomed in or more wider or whatever. But that's just the lens, okay? But the aperture is how open the lens is. So let me try and show you what I'm talking about here. Now, this might be difficult to see. Where is it? Okay, good. Now, you see that? Look at that. One second. Look at that. I'm adjusting the aperture right now. See, you can make it small or you can make it large. Now this adjusts how much light goes through your lens. Okay, and it also adjusts something else, which is very important. Now remember this rule, the more open, more wider your aperture is, the more is gonna be out of focus in your picture. So to take portraits of someone with a really blurry background, you want the aperture to be as open as possible. All right. And if you want everything to be in focus, like say a long landscape shot, you want it to be much uh, more closed. Okay. Good. I can go into much more, but that's what aperture is. Good. Now the final setting is what's called, you might've heard this word before. It's called ISO. ISO. Okay, the word ISO means nothing actually. It's actually an abbreviation of the name of a company. It was the name of the company that called it ISO. It was the name of the company that figured out like measurements, like meters or inches or whatever, and then they classified it under this name. It doesn't actually mean anything. It's just the name of the goddamn company. All right, good. So <clears throat> now what ISO does is basically it's how, how sensitive the camera is to light. In the old days when you shot with film, different types of film would, would have different sensitivities to light. When I say sensitivity, I mean how much light is needed to make the image bright, okay? Um, in the old days, you had to have one roll of film that would be a certain sensitivity. And if, and that might look good for outdoor shots with bright sunshine where there's lots of light. Then if you go indoors into a dark area, uh, you, need, you need a different type of film to make an indoors area look bright still, even though it's super dark. Now, the beauty with today's digital things is you can change the sensitivity of your camera without changing your film, because there's no film there. All you're doing is adjusting some numbers, which will adjust the ISO. So a higher ISO number will make your camera more sensitive to light. However, the downside is the more sensitive you make it, the more uh, noise or grain you will introduce into your shot. Sorry, this is a very bubbly coffee on me I'm drinking right now. I don't know why. So the higher your ISO, the more sensitive it will be to light, which means you can shoot in a darker place. However, the downside is the higher you go with ISO, the more, uh, you know, the, the, the more your quality of your image degrades. Now, this is why you would spend money on a really good camera because really expensive cameras, unlike this one, can, can do a really high sensitivity without uh, degrading the quality of your image. Okay, good, good. That's the three parts you need to know about the camera. The shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. And of course, the button that takes the photo. Uh, and all a professional photographer knows how to do when it comes to cameras is what you need to manually adjust by on its own in order to get different effects. Do you want a blur background? Do you want to see everything in focus? Do you want the shot to have motion blur in it? Do you want it to be like super crispy and just like a fragment of time, right? Do you want to make a dark area look bright? Do you want to make a bright area look dark? All these kinds of things. 
But that's the simplicity of it. That's the simplicity of it. Okay, you have more questions, you just message me because I'm here to help you and I love you. So take it easy and Merry Christmas.